All right, guys, so we're going ahead and removing the eight millimeter screws, holding on the perimeter of the underbelly pan. You've got some here into the transmission pan, some into the side panels, into the front panel, all the way around. We'll get those, and then we're gonna get these 16s out of the way. Next up after that is the 11 mils, these E10s that hold the exhaust bracket on here. We're gonna remove these, uh, I believe they're six mils or eight mil Allens to get that cross member out. These 13 on each side and these 13s back here holding the rear of the muffler and the disconnects for the valves, which will remove the exhaust from there. And then once we get the exhaust down, we'll be able to start working in on these O2 sensors and catalytic converters. There you go guys, panel off. Now we can get a much better look at everything. See the clamp bolts there and the front clamp bolt there. We will uh, have to bring the car down and remove the O2 sensor stuff, but we'll get what we can from down here in the exhaust off, then we'll go back up top. So let's go ahead and get the rest of this exhaust system off. First starting with this cross member and then working on with our front bolts here. There's four holding it to the down pipes, two E10s there and a total of four 13s, two here near the diff and two near the back of the car. All right guys, so we got the stock cats out. From what it looked like, looked like the first time they had been out. So my guess is, is this car's never had downpipes in it. Turbos look really good. Always, every time I have this car on the lift, I'm checking for any problems from any of the previous stuff we've worked on or any new problems that are developing. Side by side, you can see how much smaller, more round these cats are, as well as just the overall design being uh, slightly thicker and uh, bigger here in the piping. So it should flow better than the factories. We'll see if I notice any power difference. We've got the other one here, the other one there on the ground, right there. So we're gonna get ahead and get these O2 sensors swapped over, working on it right now. It's a 7 8 wrench that we're using. Swap the O2 sensors over, and then uh, get these cats installed back in the car, and uh, we'll get some real world testing and see if the check engine light stays off with these bad boys in the car and the check engine light monitor turned on for the secondary O2 sensors. So let's go ahead and get them in the car. Big shout out to Mastery of Art and Design too for giving us these pre-production set to test out. Thank you for that very much. Uh, excited to get these bad boys on the car. The downpipes are in, it's fairly tight clearance here. The O2 sensor is super tight here. Bolt super tight there. Just a little bit of finesse and everything goes in smoothly though. You can see the O2 sensors ran the way they were originally. Everything basically for the most part back to the way that it was. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and run these around, see how they do. All right guys, so the old intercooler has been removed off the M2 and we have this Big old Mishimoto box right here. The part number right there, Mishimoto INT-F80-15, which stands for Mishimoto Intercooler for F80. Go ahead and get this box open and take a look at what's inside of here. I'm excited to get a look at this thing. All right, upon opening the box, uh, they give you your classic Mishimoto little uh, scented uh, logo there. Super cool. Looks like maybe some stickers or some install instructions some hardware to mount some of the brackets for the intercooler got these nice foam pieces use my other hand here because it's not hurt let's see oh, yep i'm gonna put the camera down guys no way i'm getting that out here it is in all its glory out of the box we've got this nice wrinkle black finish mishimoto logos all over everything gotta love that some nice big aluminum welds here. All the nipples come blocked off, which is super nice, so that you know everything's nice and clean from the factory. Nothing has gotten inside of here. You don't have to worry about putting this on your motor and having a bunch of sand or dirt or something. Get inside the engine, super easy install though, so we're gonna go ahead and use the hardware supplied, get 
I don't know where the brackets are. I'll find them. I'll show you guys here. Oh, here there. Get all this stuff, these little brackets and the reservoir. Swapped over, mounted onto here, as well as the map sensor. And then plop it down in the car. It's pretty straightforward. It should take us about, I don't know, five, 10 minutes. Let's go ahead and uh, get all these brackets on the intercooler and then go ahead and get the intercooler in the car. So I ended up clearancing this little pedestal here for the reservoir. As you can see here, bolt holes are lining up now. Originally, when I put the thing on, it was kind of like this and it was stressing the, the plastic out. So I ended up creating a little extra clearance on the plastic, which uh, I don't know, I didn't even read their instructions. I don't know if they say to do this, but I did it anyways. Made a little extra clearance through here, beveled that bracket just a little bit in this area here, this channel, as well as this right here to just give us a little more room so we don't have to stress the threads out. Uh, got a wiper down, got a little bit of metal shavings on her, but basically she's ready to go in the car once I tighten all this stuff up. All right guys, this is what it looks like from the bottom. You got two screws here to hold on the front bracket. When you flip this thing over, it'll be facing the front here. Put the rear bracket, reservoir, the two screws for the reservoir, the two screws for the map sensor. Looks just like our OEM one did with the reservoir mounted here. Everything's been tightened down. Last thing I gotta do is pull the clamp forward, pull all these little caps off the ends here. And literally it just plops down. It registers here on these two rear nipples and this front nipple here obviously goes into the J pipe on the charge pipes, clips on the coolant lines and we're done. Super easy. So let's go ahead and pop her on there and get this bad boy running again. Guys, we got the keys. Let's go ahead and start her up for the first time with the new intercooler installed. Start up nice. Check the reservoir. No, not fluid. We're just gonna let that bleed. Take it for a test drive. Go, baby. If you like this video, be sure to check out the next one. And if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to subscribe and like the video. It helps a lot. Thanks and see you in the next one.